So let's have a look at it when we actually have simple fractions. Because if we know our multiplication facts and our fractions well enough, sometimes we don't have to change the denominators if they don't all match. Okay. Now, although we're adding by three here, all of the previous questions, all the questions have had different denominators. But here we've got three fractions and two of them are the same denominator. So do we actually need to change those fractions so that they've all got the same denominator? No, we don't. Okay, let's rewrite it. Okay, we've got the three fifths and the five eight. Uh, sorry, the five eighths and the three eighths. If we add five and three together, it gives us one whole. I don't need a denominator if it's a whole number. So all I need to do is then add two sevenths. My answer there gives me one and two sevenths. Easy peasy. I don't have to change any of those denominators if I've got two that match with the same denominator. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. Okay. What can we do here that we can change without having to change all three of them? Do you notice a common factor between any of those numbers? Yeah, 18 and nine, okay? So if I now multiply that by two, okay, that's like gonna be 14 over 18. If I add 14 and four together, that gives me one whole. That's 18 eighteenths, isn't it? So all I have left is that fraction there, 3 thirteenths. I don't have to change all those denominators. Those denominators are all the same. But equally, if I know I'm going to get, end up with whole numbers, I don't need to change all of the denominators. So sometimes you need to be careful because it might trick you into changing all of the denominators. Right, this is where I'm now going to blow your brains. Okay, so this is one of those questions where there could be multiple answers. Okay, but I'm going to model one example to you and talk you through it. But this is probably going to be the most difficult part. Okay, so take this bit slow as well. Now, we've got three different denominators, and two of them here are the same. Now, 4 and 12 are factors of 24. We change all of our denominators to 24, okay? Now, we don't have any numbers here, okay, to tell us that the total of these ones now, so we've got to match it to the 24 denominators, we've got to match these three numbers now, they've all got to total 29, okay? But we've got to do it strategically, in that we've made these numbers bigger. So to get from 12 to 24, we've made it two times bigger, okay? And to get from four to 24, we've made it six times bigger. So whatever number we do, it's got to be divisible by six for this one, and this one has to be divisible by two, okay? Now we're starting with an odd number, and we know that an odd number won't fit in the six or the, four time, the, or the two times tables. So I need a number to work with for these two here, Okay, that's going to be tallied together as an equal number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this an even number. Now, I'm not going to take one off and change it to 28 because I know that 6 isn't divisible into 28. Okay, I know 2 is, but I know 6 isn't. Okay, so I'm going to take 3 off. So I'm going to make it down to the next whole number. So if I take the 3 off, okay, that's going to give me 26 left over. So between these two here, these two numbers here have to equal 26. But can I just put any two numbers in there to make 26? No, because you have to remember, we made this number here two times bigger. We made this fraction here six times bigger. So whatever we've done here to make it bigger, we need to be able to divide it by the same number. So to get from 12 to 24, we multiplied it by two. So it's got to be divisible by two. This one, we went from 4 to 24, we multiplied it by 6. So this number here has then got to be divisible by 6. So I need two numbers, one that's going to be in the 6 times tables and one that's going to be in the 2 times tables. Now it could be different, different ones altogether. I know that this one can either be here 6, 12 or 18. Okay, and then that means that I could have any other number in here that's going to then tally up to whatever it is that I'm missing. Okay, so if I had 6, I know that could be 20. If I had 12, I know that that would then be 14. If I had 18, I then know that that would be 8. So I could have different numbers in there. So I'm going to pick these two, okay, because I know that 14 add 12 gives me 26. Now to double check I've got this right, is 14 divisible by 2? Yes, it is, because I multiplied this by 2, so I've now got to divide it by 2. And 14 divided by 2 is 7. Now I need to double check. I went to get from 4 to 24, I multiplied by 6. So if I'm going to go backwards now, I now have to divide it by 6. 
Is 12 divisible by 6? Yes, it is. It's divisible twice. Okay. Now, like I said, that could have had different answers. I could have had this one here as 18. Okay. Now, 18 would have been divisible and that would have been a 3. Okay. If I had 18 left over, okay, that would have given me 8 here. 8 is divisible by 2 and that answer would have been 4. So, this one was multiple answers, but you need to remember in your head that if you've multiplied a number, you've got to make sure it's divisible by that same number. Because to get from 7 now, multiplied by 2 was 14. 2 multiplied by 6 was 12. So I know that I've got those correct. Okay. So there could be multiple answers for some of those questions. And you may find one of those on your sheets. But you need to remember, as long as it's divisible by whatever you multiplied by, then you're fine. Now, I haven't been able to include this on the PowerPoint. Because unfortunately, this one wouldn't actually let me draw all over it, which is really frustrating. But what I would do is I would have drawn right here 4 multiplied by 6. So I've done my times 6. Here I would have had 12 to 24 with my arrow and I'd have had times by 2. If I'm then going backwards, I would have had divide by 6 and divide by 2 so that you remember that in your head. Okay, that's why I'm moving my mouse around so you can see what it is I'm actually talking about because I haven't been able to doodle on it. Okay, so on that bombshell, <laughs> year 5, I would like you to have a go now at doing questions four to six on your worksheets, okay? Take it slow, okay? We will be recapping these skills though when we look at our lessons next week on Monday and Tuesday, okay? So give it a go and just see how you get on, all right? And good luck with it, year five.